Good morning, everyone. For today's edition of the Leadership Series, our guests from the fast food industry are Mr. and Mrs. Amit and Smita Chathya. Mr. Chathya joined the McDonald's family in March 1995 as the managing director of Hot Castle Restaurants. At the time, he became the youngest joint venture partner at McDonald's. Today, he is spearheading McDonald's in Western South India in the capacity of Vice Chairman. <coughs> Mrs. Smita Chathya is currently managing director of the same company. Mr. Chathya aspired to get into business since his childhood. After completing his higher education at the University of Southern California, he returned to India to work on a joint venture with a manufacturing company producing industrial lubricants. When first asked if he was interested in being a partner with, for McDonald's, he snapped back saying, you know I am a vegetarian. On second thoughts, however, he did feel that it was a good business proposition, especially when they were looking at diversifying into new markets. After a series of meetings, he finally signed the agreement in 1995. He then spent nine months in Indonesia training and trying to understand the intricacies of the business before opening the first restaurant in Mumbai in 1996. At this point, Mrs. Jatya joined McDonald's as a marketing director. She felt that her cultural background helped her crack the code for, for marketing McDonald's to an Indian market. After reaching the level of handling marketing operations for the entire company, uh, Mrs. Jatya went on to study further at the Harvard Business School. Additionally, both Mr. and Mrs. Jatya have obtained degrees in Hamburgerology from the University of Hamburger in Illinois, which is McDonald's Restaurant Management Training Center. <laughs> both Mr. and Mrs. Jatya have played significant roles in facilitating a smooth entry for McDonald's in India. Simultaneously, they also created the essential organizational structure to develop and run the chain of McDonald's restaurants in the region. Today, they have established over 110 world-class McDonald's restaurants across the west and south of India. McDonald's's popularity lies in its ability to adapt to local cultures, a model that Mr. and Mrs. Jatya have followed in all aspects. They introduced the unique concepts of vegetarian menus, health-conscious meals, and the now famous Happy Price menu. They feel that the 20 rupee burger was a game changer for them in 2004 and that they have had to constantly innovate to remain competitive in the market. In the recently held IPO of McDonald's India, they achieved a new high when the franchisee was valued at over 800 million US dollars. I would now like to invite Mr. Chathya on stage to share his journey with us. Hi, good morning everybody. Uh, Ishan, thank you so much for the very kind introduction. I can tell you that along the way, as we were building the McDonald's business, we had uh, our ups and downs. So, you know, everything is with a pinch of salt. But I know typically, uh, you all are, I mean, you know, you all relate McDonald's to burgers and fries. So while today I'm sorry I might not be able to offer you burger and fries, I can surely tell you how I got it so that you can go and enjoy it some other day, okay? So, you know, the whole idea is, uh, obviously for Smita and me, it's a privilege to be here today. Uh, we know that many of you are future leaders of India, and therefore if we can leave you with a few thoughts to just think about, you know, when it comes to sort of global brands working in a local context, I think we would have achieved a lot. So really thank you for allowing us to share our McDonald's story with you. The idea is really to give you a bit of a context through a presentation, but typically what I find is it's really the question answer that is engaging uh, and, and the interaction really leaves you with more thoughts. So, you know, I'll try and keep the presentation very brief, but please feel free to ask as many questions as you like, because that's really when the fun begins, okay? So I'll, I'll try and keep this uh, really short for you. Um, basically, when you think about leadership, You know, all leaders, all leaders, the road ahead is uncharted, okay? So if you think about Apple, right, they created the iPod, and before that there were 10,000 M3 players, but nothing really clicked as much as the iPod. If you think about the iPad, I mean, you know, who thought of tablets before Apple? 
and today everybody in the world does iPads. So for the leader, it's always for them to think through the way ahead and actually create the future rather than having to predict it. So similarly in McDonald's, uh, there were no burgers in India when we first started out. And rather than really talk about it, we felt that we've been able to create a market for burgers, fries, and coke. So uh, by the end of the presentation, I'm hoping to leave three things with you today. Uh, the first thing is, you know, you have to have the courage to follow your dreams. But it's not about just blind courage, right? Obviously, you've got to develop the ecosystem and you've got to make sure that you have the right context to follow your dream. But finally, it is, about, it is people who are able to not follow conventional wisdom alone who are able to make the difference. The second big thing that I want to talk about is, as you all know, Rome was not built in a day. And when we think about our business, we see it as a marathon. You cannot come into a market like India, which is very challenging, and especially in an area of food, where you can just come open stores and think that the consumers will immediately adapt to burgers. So our philosophy is a bit like a marathon. You know, so in a marathon, you've got to keep your energy going. And you've got to run the entire 40 miles. You don't lose steam very early. And therefore, you increase your pace as you go along. A sprinter might not be the right person for a marathon. So similarly, we feel that it's about patience, but it yet at the same time, you've got to be aggressive. So that's the second thing we want to talk about. And the third most important thing, what got you here may not get you to the next place. So essentially, what worked in the past is not necessary that it will work in the future. And while, you know, we'll talk about this a bit as we go along, but essentially, you've got to selectively forget the past. You can't forget the past completely because there's a certain core that makes a business successful. And, and we have to ensure that we don't lose the core. But at the same time, there are new challenges and you've got to organize the business accordingly as you go along. <clears throat> so very quick introduction to McDonald's. I mean, you know, what's the interesting part to me is that as a single brand, McDonald's is about almost $80 billion in sales. But all the other brands that you see together don't equal the size of McDonald's. On the other hand, even from a value point of view, McDonald's is three times the value of its ne uh, nearest competitor. And finally, it is also amongst the most valuable brands in the world. So the key question is, why is McDonald's so different? What does it do that makes it so successful? Uh, normally, in every industry, you'll have a very close second. But really, McDonald's has been able to differentiate itself and has been able to create that lead. So through the McDonald's India story today, yeah, we will try and see really you know, what happened. So it all started in 1996. I don't know how many of you were born in 1996. But uh, so you know, you've always grown up with McDonald's. But you know, when I was growing up, there was no McDonald's and there was no fast food. So I'm happy that I'm talking to a generation that has seen McDonald's from day one. Um, we opened our first restaurant in that particular year. Basically, if I kind of uh, fast forward and move to today, over the last uh, 18 years or so, been able to, we've been able to add about 174 restaurants now. Actually, that's the latest number, hot off the press from yesterday. And we serve about 165 million people in across uh, 16, uh, 16 cities. So that's what we've been able to do in the last uh, many years. So our story of uh, HRPL, what really happened? Clearly three phases. Uh, of course, I'm going to ask you questions, right? Because I know that I'm here and you're used to answering questions. So please pay attention, right? So the first phase was global, build and accelerate. And I'll kind of take you through each one and then uh, ask you that. So does anybody want to attempt uh, and tell me what does global mean? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. So, you know, it's a, a, what, what I call globalization. The whole idea for McDonald's is that while we must think like a global brand, we must sell like a local retailer, right? Now, when you think about food, tell me that the minute you go a little bit down south, we have a whole different cuisine, right? If you think about Gujarat, Rajasthan, Punjab, everybody has a different cuisine. 
So how can you take a brand that is, or a, or a concept that is so local like food, but yet become a global player? So, you know, this section is all about that. And the crux of the matter is it's about adapting. You see, and, and that's been one of the biggest reasons why McDonald's has been successful. I don't know how many of you are aware, but uh, you know, there's Fortune does the most admired company list. And while McDonald's has on and off been in the top 10, but one of the things that everybody really loves about McDonald's is how it's able to be successful internationally. And the primary reason is that while we think global, you've got to act like a local retailer. So when we first started out, I talked about courage, right? And uh, when we first started out, there was no market. And, and again, I'll tell you in a minute why and what was the context. Also, the government was saying that we don't want potato chips, right? I mean, our french fries, the government just didn't want them. And they said, instead, we want computer chips. And that was the whole trend and the thinking in the government circles at that time. But lastly, when we looked at the farming, agriculture, the quality that we wanted in terms of our products were just not available. And because they were not available, it involved a lot of investment in getting the agriculture right. In this context, I mean, you can guess that we definitely needed courage to get in there, right? So there's no market. The government is saying, please don't come in. We are happy with IT. We don't want potato chips. And at the same time, then it required huge investment. So, you know, you can understand that. So I'll tell you, you know, what we did. The crux is to then develop an ecosystem that works. And, and one of the first things we did, for example, Okay, before that, so this is India, right? I mean, familiar, very familiar territory, right? Or you don't go in, the, in this particular direction of the street. But this was India. Again, because this is before many of you, I remember when I was growing up, there was one brand that came up in the 1990s, and that was called Open House. And this Open House was in Bandra. Right, so we city boys would run to Bandra every time we got an opportunity because we said, wow, this is the best you know, fast food uh, company in the country. Now what happened was uh, very soon, by in two or three years that shut down and that didn't do well. Then another brand came called Croissant, right? And then another few other brands came but nothing survived. So when we first started out, my, and when I told my friends I'm doing McDonald's, they already thought I'm crazy because you know, being vegetarian, you know, you're doing all this, they were like, wow, that's amazing. But on top, of the, on top of that, they say that there is no market, so why in this world are you doing this? So when I talk about courage, you know, clearly we needed some courage to get this going. But essentially, as you will see, that if you create the right context, uh, pretty much anything can work. Meanwhile, in terms of the government, what had happened is when we, before we opened the doors to our first restaurant, our competitor had already started opening restaurants. What happened was that uh, some of them were shut down, some of them were ransacked, and the whole atmosphere was very, very delicate. And we were wondering whether when McDonald's opens the doors to the public, will it really survive? However, what we realized is that if you work with the government, and if you set the right context again in terms of what we were trying to do, uh, you know, things can work out really well. So we went and met all the right people. We shared with them the amount of work we had done to create agricultural impact yeah, by working with farmers to develop all the raw material uh, grown in India. We had set up food processing facilities. We talked about our employment and training and so on and so forth. And people said, wow, this is a great thing. We didn't know this. Why don't you open and then you know, help us grow the agriculture business in India? And when we did that, it worked out for us. But along with this, we also had to do things that were relevant from a customer's point of view. Now, why is this so important? <clears throat> why is this so important? This is important because when you think about a global company, think about the fact that a hamburger basically means you, know, you have uh, meat in it, right? And you are going into a country where you are saying your core product, the Big Mac. I don't know how many of you heard of the Big Mac. How many of you heard of the Big Mac? You all heard of the Big Mac, right? And when you take your core product and you say, I'm not going to do that in India, I feel that is courage, right? So local adaptation, and like I mentioned, sell like a local retailer becomes extremely, extremely important. So we said no beef and pork, we did separate kitchens, and we created a whole range of vegetarian products. And that really, really worked for us quite well. <coughs>
Um, the other thing we did was we actually created the entire ecosystem where we, you know, took a potato, not, you know, a potato is a potato is a potato, right? How complicated can it be? But you know what? It took us 10 years to grow the right quality of potato to get French fries in India. We wanted French fries that were not soggy, French fries that would not absorb oil. And it involved, when we had set up a $10 million facility, when we opened the doors to our customers, our customers said, hey, what kind of French fries are you serving us? We don't like them. You know, they are soggy, they are short, they are small. And the point I want to make to you, that as a global brand, we said, fine, write off that entire investment. We wrote off that entire investment. We appealed to the government, started importing potatoes in the short term, okay, to do the right quality of rice. But over 10 years, we actually created this entire ecosystem. And today, the fries that you eat in McDonald's is made in India, in Gujarat, very close from here. And, and that's been a phenomenal agricultural revolution in many ways. And sometimes while you know, things don't work out, uh, eventually if it does work out, it's fine. We have our wins, we have our losses, but at the end of the day, we've got to overcome it. So you know, we're happy that McDonald's helped him do that. So you know, we move to the next phase of the brand. Now, you know, I want to ask you, what do I mean by build? What do I mean by build? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah, more than that, a little bit more than that. A little bit more than developing the company. Yes. Building an image even a little bit more than that, actually. Hmm? Sorry? Even yet more than that. <laughs> I mean, all of this though, every single one, but I think a little bit broader, last one then. Okay, so you know, I, I must say that everything that you pointed out, it's all of that. But really, the big thing here is, as I talked about Rome not being built in a day, this is about building the foundation for the business. And the idea is that you must walk before you run. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with how a building is built. You know, have you ever seen how a building or construction is done? You have these huge towers, you know, 40 floors, 100 floors, I don't know how long they are. But did you know, that before you go up, you have to go down, right? So you have to dig, and you have to dig deep. The taller the building, the deeper you go down. And it's about the foundation. So if you build a very strong foundation, the building can go 100 floors up. And I tell a lot of the young recruits who join us sometimes as management trainees, and I tell them that, you know, if, if there's one advice I can give you, actually there are two things I say. One, I say attitude is everything. You know, either you see everything as a negative or you see everything as a positive, right? And in the, like there's recession, you've got to find some positive stuff in there. So that's one. But the second thing I tell them, that you can always make a little more money by jumping the job. But it's the foundation. If you build a strong foundation, you won't stop at general manager. Yeah, you'll become the MD. 
and you can't just keep jumping to build to to get higher. You first need to build the foundation because if you are solid, you're going to go higher. So that's what it is. You know, we took or rather had the courage to take the time to go a bit slower than our competition and not open as many stores. But we felt that we need to go deep down before we go back up, right? And that's what this space is all about. And that's why it kind of, this is what I mean by Rome was not built in a day. Let's talk through what happened in this space. So, you know, the customer said, fine, we opened the door, but guess what we learned? We learned that we had two vegetarian products on the menu, but 50% of our customers were vegetarian. And they said, guys, you know, come on, McDonald's. I mean, if you really want us to come back more often, give us a little more. So this phase was about understanding after opening the doors, what we got right and what we didn't and getting that right. So a lot of you talked about brand trust in this phase. You talked about building the business and so on. So like I mentioned, it's a little bit about that. Uh, the second aspect was driving value for money and I'll talk a little bit about that. But the third thing in retail is extremely, extremely important. And that's unit economics, right? And I, and I mean, I, I'm sure you all, you all have done economics and business. I'll ask you a simple question. You know, many times retailers go wrong because they just want to run. But the whole idea is that because you are opening retail units every single day, right, you've got to make sure that that one McDonald's that we opened should make money and the business model of that McDonald's is right before we start building more. That's common sense, right? Because if your one McDonald's is minus, when you multiply minus with minus, you get more, uh, multiply minus, right, you'll get more minuses. So if you have one restaurant that is losing 100 rupees, you will have 100 restaurants, no minus and minus is plus, I understand that, but minus into plus. So if you adding one, two, five restaurants, and in one you are losing 100 rupees, you lose 500 rupees. So the idea is that how do you fix the business model and get that right before you grow? So that was about unit economics, and McDonald's took the time to do it, which today helped us to get to the 350 restaurants that we have. And the important thing is that at every given time, our market share in India was number one. So that's the whole thing about unit economics. Now let me ask you a question again. How many times do you eat in a day normally? I eat more times than normal. Three times, right? It could be three to four times. So in a month, I mean, all, all of you have done maths. So in a month, how many times do you eat in total? Three times in a day, so in a month, how many times? 90 to 120 times, right? So if, if you eat 90 to 100 times in a month, maybe more, right? So if people ate out only three times in a month, that's it. So out of the 100 occasions for eating out, people ate out only three times in a month. So now let me ask you another question. So when McDonald's, if you remember, is now developing its strategy, Right, the big buzzword of strategy. So who do you think is our competitor? Sorry? Who? Okay, so that's, that's the fun part, right? So all of you are wrong. That's the point I wanted to point out to you. So basically, our number one competitor is the housewife, right? Because people are not eating out. So my question is, I mean, how do you compete with mom, right? It's a tough one. So that's what we were up against. Can you imagine when we were building the business? So essentially the point is that people were eating out so less that really it was not about competing with other food brands. It was really about building the category. Again, some of you said that when I asked that question. So when I'm talking about building the foundation, it included the business model, it included the customer, it included the category and all of that. So basically, that's why I say that home was not built in a day. You've got to be patient as you go along. Um, you know, so first thing we wanted to do was get the menu right. So the famous Alu Tiki was born in 1997 as a result of us realizing that one, we need Indian taste for the consumer, and two, we needed affordable prices, and three, by combining the two together, we maybe, maybe could compete with mom. 
tough. But that's what the idea was. The, uh, the other idea was to do roti-like wraps that are familiar for the Indian consumer as well. What were our customers saying in those days? You know, the customer was basically saying that I only go to McDonald's to celebrate, right? The customer was also saying that, you know, it's a place I intend to visit. And finally, they were also saying that, you know, I don't know the prices, but I think it's expensive. You know, this is, remember, average customers. And we said to ourselves that that's not good enough. We don't want people to come and only celebrate at McDonald's. Of course, we want that on weekends. But we need people to think about McDonald's when they are hungry. And that was another challenge that we had at that time. So what we did from 2004 is we reinforced value. I don't know if you've done Blue Ocean. Uh, you know, Blue Ocean's an interesting concept in business. It's a territory that is unoccupied by anybody uh, in business, and you try to attack that. And the basic uh, sense of that is, so for example, I said that our biggest competition was home, right? So the home feature was affordability. Uh, people were eating at home because it was more affordable. And we felt that if we can make our food more affordable, the fun of eating out and the enjoyment captured with value is what's going to change our business. And that's really what we intended to do. And let me tell you, from 2004, we haven't looked back. And our business has really been extremely well uh, done. So this is the famous Alu Tiki again, you know, posters of the price point, etc. Now let me show you maybe one ad. हम मैंने और boyfriend girlfriend है क्या? No. क्यों? क्योंकि girlfriend बहुत demanding होती है. मुझे ये चाहिए, मुझे वो चाहिए. जमता नहीं है. पर मुझे तो सिर्फ मैं कालू टिकी चाहिए. ऐसा क्या? तो फिर ठीक है. शुक्र है. मैं कालू टिकी है सिर्फ पच्चीस रुपए में आम लगे तो ये तो इस एड वर्क रियली वेल फॉर अस डी आइडिया इस व्हेन यू कम्युनिकेट फ्रॉम अ मार्केटिंग पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू डी आइडिया इस नॉट टू जस्ट कम्युनिकेट अ प्राइस बट यू गोट हैव अ मैसेज अलोंग विद दैट in fact, uh, when this message was, uh, when this ad was run, uh, you know, it, it got uh, very, very high points by the creative board in Asia. We were quite pleased with that. And then Philippines copied this ad as well and got into trouble, of course, later. That's a different story. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so acceleration. So, you know, we built the foundation. It took us a lot of years. And the key was that obviously as a market leader, what I mentioned earlier when I first started out, what worked in the past may not work in the future. And therefore, you have to forget the past and, and, and look at different ways to build the future. So the phase of our growth changed to acceleration. We'll talk a little bit about why. So, you know, we built only 18 stores in the first seven years. Well, that's about it. Uh, in the next seven years, we built about 69 stores. Meanwhile, our competition was really growing, etc., etc., and that was fine because we felt we had our own path. And in the last three years, we built about 74 restaurants. Now, tell me, from maximum we built is 74 restaurants, and you can see that we want to now build 500, right? So, if we want to, what we've done in 17, 18 years, we want to do in two or three or four years, right? Clearly, that's a big challenge. And what that means is that what got us successful so far is not going to make us get to where we want to go. Correct? So that's what I'm trying to say, that as a, as a business person, you've got to evolve your strategy. So let me give you one example. You know, in 2002, 2003, uh, McDonald's was not doing well globally. We, we didn't do well. Now, uh, can anybody guess why we were globally not doing that well? I mean, just a guess. In context to what I'm trying to say. Sorry? Uh, not really. A little, also that, but there was more. And, and okay, primarily what happened, I'll tell you, that McDonald's 
as a brand stayed in the past while the customer moved ahead. And let me explain that to you. So the customer wanted something else, but McDonald's remained in the past because they thought that the past worked for them. And why change anything? And because they didn't, the brand became irrelevant to the customer of today. And in 2003, we completely reimaged brand McDonald's globally. Right? And I'm telling you, from 2003 until 2013, our stock price, which is a barometer for success, went from $12 to today almost $100. Right? So clearly, what McDonald's did worked. And it meant that the consumer of today wanted things that were different from what McDonald's was offering. Our, our ambiance was outdated. And it had a more operations feel to a rather than a customer feel. Our menu was outdated. Customers wanted modern choices. Yeah, customers wanted health also. And McDonald's did not have that in their menu at that point in time. And with a complete remake, we were able to really, really make a difference. So this kind of talks a little bit about that. And, and that's my third mantra, that what worked in the past will not, won't necessarily work in the future. But do you think that challenges go away? Challenges don't go away. And to give you an example, so basically you deal with new challenges and that's why you need a new way of doing things, okay? So for example, in the early days it was about uh, getting the customer value proposition right and all the things we talked about. But now, customers knew McDonald's and it was about expansion. It was about how soon can we get to that 500 locations and how soon and how quickly can we deliver the customer what they want. So for example, if you're on television, advertising, and you are you know, not in a city, say Nagpur, and customers in Nagpur are seeing brand McDonald's, and I'm not able to offer that, that's not good news, because there's aspiration from the brand that they are not able to fulfill. So therefore, the challenge has changed completely. From just setting up supply chain, it was now about expanding capacity while still making money. So basically, QSR from a fad became a necessity. That means people started now thinking of McDonald's when they were hungry, instead of just celebrating. So that was a very big shift. Also, uh, some of the changes we made was about the menu. So, sorry. <laughs> So while in the early days we were building a menu that appealed to the Indian consumer, now we were innovating, we were launching more global products like the McFlurry, chicken nuggets, we did the spicy fest, etc, etc. Also, we knew that we had to stay in touch with our customers. <coughs> our customers wanted new modern products. So we introduced the Egg Meg Burger, we introduced the Grill Bro Burgers, and we introduced a whole range of products that connected with our customer today. It was also about changing the decor. You know, my, I, I look at it a bit like fashion. <coughs> if you think about the clothes that we would all wear, or, or the way we would even sort of cut our hair, or anything for that matter, 10 years ago, <coughs> is very different from today. And therefore, as a brand, we kept evolving. In the early days, it was about getting the McDonald's restaurants. Now it's about the decor and the brand. Also, digital engagement, Wi-Fi, <coughs> available at the McDonald's restaurant, and things like that. So this is one of the big changes that we are making as well. Also, brand extensions. <coughs> the idea was that if we are not able to bring McDonald's, if customers are not able to come to McDonald's, bring McDonald's to them, that is how we launched delivery. But I'm very happy to tell you that McCafe was something we did not have. And yesterday, we announced that the first McCafe in India is opening on Monday at the uh, Soho Central Mall. So we are very excited about how we are sort of changing the brand perception for the customers. So McCafe is a bit like Starbucks, so I hope you come and visit us, right? So one more ad.
Shake Shake Fries with African Bili Bili Spice Asian Hot Garlic Dip and Mexican Spice Veg at the McDonald's Spice Fest. instance it was about emotionally communicating value and price because we wanted to ensure that people thought we were affordable and you saw how we celebrated food which is what McDonald's is known for and the food appeal. So this is what I mean by changing and evolving. So in summary I hope I've been able to at least uh, give you some brief thought on, on the three mantras that have worked for us to bring the brand. I'm sure there are many many more factors but all I'm saying is this is something for you to think about as you sort of get into your careers in the future. And you know, I, I firmly believe that leadership is about being able to create the future rather than worry about predicting it. I think you know, when, when you think about quick service restaurant, uh, you know, just to, I know statistics might not be relevant for you, but when we first started it did not exist. The industry did not exist. And there were all these failure aspects there and everybody thought we were crazy. But today in India, uh, QSR is an $18 billion market and eating out is over $100 billion. So a whole new category has evolved and there's a lot of excitement in this sector. So you know, my view is that if you, uh, if you believe in it, there is, it, it can always be done, but build the ecosystem to that. Uh, with that, I say thank you. Thank you for a most entertaining and informative presentation and talk this morning. I think you reinforce the adage, besides every successful woman, stands a successful man. <laughs> Can we have a big round of applause for you? Thank you very much. I really appreciate it.